Hey everyone, WeirdDevs here. I'm going to show you how to set up a server using the LEMP stack. LEMP is just an acronym in which L stands for a Linux OS, in our case will be CentOS 8. E is for Nginx, and even though Nginx starts with an N, it sounds like it starts with an E. M is for MySQL, which is going to be our database, but we'll be using MariaDB to process all of that. And finally, P is for PHP. Hopefully you guys already know what that is. The LEMP step is great for most website setups like WordPress and MyBB forums. You can definitely make your own 100% scratch websites too. PHP is a pretty powerful language after all. Now that you understand that, we're going to need an actual server. I'll be showing you how to do that with DigitalOcean. They're the cheapest service I found at a starting price of $5 per month. And if you use my link in the description to sign up for an account, it'll give you a $100 credit or two months, whichever is used up first. I don't know of any free VPS and I'd be surprised if there is any free one because they're not exactly super cheap for any server to just give away. But $5 a month, that's basically free. You're paying for a computer on the cloud. Once you log into your DigitalOcean account and create a project, you should see something like this. You'll just navigate to your project and at the top right you'll see a create button. Click on that and then create a droplet. For your Linux distribution, make sure you choose CentOS and I'll be using the latest stable version which is 8.1 right now. And I'll just choose the cheapest server, which would be the basic starter plan. If we click to the left here for price options, you should see even cheaper ones. And like I said, $5 a month. And it's actually all right for the really cheap price. You get one gigabyte of memory, one CPU core, 25 gigabytes of storage, and a thousand gigabytes of network transfer. It's nothing impressive, but for a website server, that is plenty. You can always upgrade later on. If you do upgrade, take note that you might not be able to downgrade. I won't need any block storage, so I'll just ignore that. For our data center region, just choose anything that's closest to your location. I'll choose New York 1. I like to turn on monitoring and I don't need these other two. With authentication, I'd really recommend SSH keys. It's just so much more secure because if you only use a password, there are scraper bots out there that'll just brute force almost every server IP that I can think of. And I'll show you how to do that right now. To create an SSH key, you'll want a tool like Putty. Just search up Putty on Google. I'll click on download it here and then you just choose a bit version that suits your computer if you don't know then just choose 32 bit i know i'm 64 bit so i would choose that once that's installed you can just press the windows key and then type in putty gen and open that click on this generate button here and then just move your mouse around the center area and then it will create a key. In this input field, make sure you choose the password that you would want your login to be. Make sure you save your password somewhere so you won't ever get locked out of your server. And then you just paste your password in both this field and then the confirm password field. Now you'll want to save your private key, so just click on this button at the bottom here. Save it to a location that you know you won't lose it, and I'll just name it private.ppk. If you want to reuse this key, you'll also need to save your public key somewhere, and you'll see why in a second. We'll just name that public. Going back to the top here, you should see a text field that you can copy from. All the way from the top left, ssh.rsa. Copy all of that onto the bottom, and then press Ctrl C to copy, or right click copy of course. And then back in your digital ocean server creation, you would click on ssh key and then click on new ssh key. Then what you copied from putty gen, you would paste that in here. Then name it whatever you want, I'll name it wrdyt and then add SSH key. Then you should see that it's selected. I'll only be creating one droplet, and as a host name, just choose anything that makes sense for you. I'll call it LEMP Tutorial. For your project, you just choose whatever project you wanted it in. I want it in WRDYT, so I'll keep it there. If this is for an actual project server, I would recommend turning on backups in case you mess up your server, because it is a Linux server, and it's really easy to mess up, so keep that in mind. Now that we feel that we've properly configured our server, we can just click on Create Droplet. Now we'll wait for DigitalOcean to create it. We'll know it's done once this bar has filled out. It's created. Now we can just click on this here to get the dashboard and now we should see our IP. Now to communicate with the server, we'll want to open up the software that we installed, which is PuTTY. Not PuTTY Gen, PuTTY. We would copy the IP and then inside of your IP address field, you would paste in your IP. This is a freshly made server, so the port will be default, which is 22. And because we decided to increase our security with SSH keys, we'll want to navigate to the categories here, look for connection, open up SSH, and then click on auth. Where it says private key file for authentication, click on the browse button and then navigate over to your private key file that you created. I named it private ppk so I know it's this. And going back to the session category. So to save it, you would just go down here, choose a name, I'll say my server, then click on the save button. It creates a new save option here. But before I open up that server, you might want to increase your font size because the font is pretty tiny. To do so, you will go over to the window category, appearance, and then in font settings, you'll want to click on the change button. I'll just raise it to 20, click on OK 
away and then you'll want to save again so selecting my server save it resaves it overwrites the save and now we can just click on my server then open the user you'll want to log in as will be root this is the default because this is a brand new server and then for your passphrase you would choose the password that you selected for your and then for passphrase you would choose the password that you used for your private key i saved that somewhere so i'll just copy that and then i'll paste that into putty to paste you would just right click you don't press ctrl v it doesn't work i right click just now and it pasted but you can't see it it's invisible and it looks like i haven't even typed yet that's just how putty is so don't go right clicking several times because it'll just paste in several times and it says we've logged in successfully now you have the first part of the limp stack properly set up l short for linux which is our centos 8 server let's set up the second part of the limp stack which will be nginx to install nginx what you would type is sudo dnf install nginx then you just press y to confirm the installation of nginx press y again and now nginx is installed but now what you need to do is sudo system control or system ctl start nginx at this point nginx is running but what you would run now is sudo system control enable nginx what this does is make sure that it starts up nginx every time your server reboots otherwise if you power your server off and then power it back on nginx isn't going to turn on automatically which makes your server have even longer unnecessary downtime now that we have nginx installed if we just copy our ip and then visit that inside of our web browser you should see that you have a working web page returned by nginx now let's start up the third part of the LAMP stack, which would be installing MySQL. Like said towards the beginning of this video, I'm going to be using MariaDB as the MySQL processor. To install MariaDB, we would type in sudo dnf install mariadb-server. We'll type in yes to confirm the installation. And just like we did with nginx, we'll want to start and enable MariaDB, which would be sudo system control start MariaDB. This starts up the MySQL database and to make sure it starts up on every server reboot, we would do sudo system control enable MariaDB. For good security measure, you definitely would want to run the secure installation script, which would just be sudo mysql secure installation. At this point, you'll want to choose a MySQL password. You can do that, but I'm not going to. First off, it's going to ask you to select a password for your MySQL login with the root username. If you want, you can do that, but personally, I don't really see a point if you're only going to access your database locally. So I'll just press enter for none, and then to set n for set root password. I again don't want a password, so I'll put n, but if you wanted one, you would press yes. I'll select yes to remove anonymous users. We don't need that. I don't want to allow remote access to the MySQL database, so I'll press yes to disable allow it. I'll remove the test database, so why? And then why to reload the tables. And once you see thanks for using MariaDB, you can feel pretty confident that your MariaDB installation is somewhat secure. There is more you'd want to consider, but this should be all you need to do for now. If you want to see that MySQL is working properly, you can search on Google for a tool called Haiti SQL. Then you would click on the link that says HaitiSQL.com, navigate to downloads, and then click on this installer link here. Once you've installed it, you can just type in Haiti after pressing the Windows key, open up that app, and then you should see something like this. Even though we disallowed remote logins, we're still able to use this tool because we can use a different kind of network type. This would be the typical thing if you were to use a remote login, but we're going to use MariaDB or MySQL SSH tunnel. You should get a new tab up here that says SSH tunnel. To set it up, you'll want to select your plink.exe location. To find that, you'll want to type in PuTTY after pressing the Windows key, right click on the PuTTY app, and then choose open file location. This only gives you the file location to the shortcut, so we'll want to right click on the shortcut then open file location again. You should see the file called plink.exe. We'll want to copy this file directory by clicking up here and then control C to copy. And now if we go back to Haiti SQL inside of the SSH tunnel tab, we'll click on this folder to the right and then click in up here and then control V to paste in the file path. We can double click on plink.exe and then automatically paste in the file path. The rest is pretty much the same as we did with PuTTY. We'll want to copy the IP from our server dashboard and then control V to paste. Our port is 22 so we'll leave that. For you Username, we logged in as root, so type in root, and then password would be the password you selected for your SSH private key. If you didn't choose private key, then you would just get the password you received in an email from DigitalOcean. So I'll copy that password and then paste it in. Plank timeout, we can leave it at four. For private key file, we can just click on this folder and then navigate to our private key file. Once you find it, just double click it and then it should paste in the file path. For local port, for some reason it defaults to 3307, we'll want to change that to 3306. And now our SSH tunnel should be properly set up. If we 
go back to settings, this would be your normal MySQL login. We can leave hostname as 127001, that's localhost, perfectly fine. For user, we'll choose root. And for password, I chose no password, which you should recall from up here, chose no. If you chose a password for your MySQL root login, then you would paste that in. Port, we'll leave that as 3306, everything's totally fine, so we can just rename this here to my server, and then click on save. Now if we were to choose my server, and then click on the open button, you'll get something like this. You'll view a GUI for your server's MySQL database. The MySQL installation created three databases for you. You should see the MySQL database. You can look at the tables and then look at the rows. But if you can see all of this, that should imply that you can programmatically work with MySQL via PHP. Now that we know MySQL is working properly, we can start to install the final part of our stack, which will be PHP. Because we use Nginx, we don't only install the PHP package, we'd be installing a package called PHP FPM. To do that, you would run the command sudo dnf install php fpm and then php my sql nd. Press yes to confirm, then php fpm should be installed. But we're going to install another package so we can edit a configuration file. If you wanted to use vim, go ahead, but I like to use nano. To install nano, you would run sudo dnf install nano. Y is always to accept. Now we can edit our php fpm configuration file with the command that would be sudo nano slash etc slash php fpm dot d slash www.conf scroll down a tiny bit you should see user equals apache you should also see group equals apache we will replace apache with nginx same for group equals nginx then press ctrl x and then press y and enter to confirm your changes if we just edit again and then look we should see that the changes have confirmed user equals nginx group equals nginx now we can start up php using the command sudo system control start php fpm i'm not sure if we need to enable it like we do with nginx and mysql for a server reboots but I'll do that anyways so sudo system control enable php fpm since we installed php fpm that should have automatically edited the nginx configuration files so we will need to restart nginx to do so you'd run the command sudo system control restart nginx to test that PHP is working, we can navigate to Nginx's default website serving directory. To do so, we would run the command cd slash user slash share slash nginx slash html. And then if you type ls to list the directory's contents, we'll see index.html and the other files that we saw when visiting our server's IP. Now let's create our test PHP file. We'll run nano test.php. It'll create a file called nano.php and edit it with the contents that we choose. And then type in a little bit of PHP code just to output some PHP information. So PHP info, close it off, control X and then Y to save. There's no restarts we need to do. So if we just visit our server's IP and then navigate to slash test.php, you'll see your PHP information. Now that you see this page, you know that PHP is working perfectly fine. So that's that. Your LEMP stack server is pretty much set up. I imagine that you wouldn't want to use nano to create every one of your PHP files or any other website file. For one thing, you can't even upload images this way. If you'd like to just upload it directly to your server, you would use an FTP tool. What I prefer to use is WinSCP. If you just search up WinSCP on Google and then go to the first result, you can just click on this download button and then run the installer. You should see something like this and logging in is pretty much the same thing. Thing. Make sure you choose SFTP and for hostname that would be your server's IP so go back to the server dashboard, copy the IP, navigate to WinSCP and paste that in. Your port number is 22, your username is root and then you would put in your SSH private key password inside of password, paste that in. If you click on the advanced button you should see this at the left here, navigate to SSH, authentication and then for private key file click on this triple dot button and then navigate to your private key file. After double clicking that it should automatically paste it in. We can click on OK and let's save that. Save my server click ok you see that here we'll click on my server and then log in same thing with putty it's just warning you that this is brand new we'll click on yes for some reason it wants the ssh password again so we'll just put that in and now you have direct access to your server's files let's navigate to nginx's default web serving directory to navigate i'll just double click up here and then type in slash user slash share slash nginx slash html just like we did with putty and click on ok and then you see that at this point you can just drag and drop your files from windows and to win a CP. That'll upload it to the server as you can see here, haha.php. And if we test that from putty with ls, just see the haha.php is here. And one more thing we can do is navigate to your server's IP slash haha.php. It says hello world. 
So you can just go ahead and drop your normal PHP website in here and then expect it to work like normal, assuming you don't need to do much database configuration. But I suspect that you won't want to use a service IP as a way to navigate to your website. But if you wanted to set it to something like mycoolwebsite.com, you'll want to learn how to work with Nginx's configuration settings. That's something that definitely deserves its own video. I don't have a tutorial on that yet, but I'll definitely make one in the future, so subscribe if you're interested in that. Otherwise, if you need something right now, just search up on something on Google like CentOS 8 Nginx how to configure domains. If this video helped you out, please leave a like. I would greatly appreciate that. I make lots of other simple tutorials with how to be a developer, so if you're interested in that, consider subscribing. It might help you out. Thank you for watching and have a good one.